do this one more time very quickly. Sorry, guys. This time I'm just going to write down from my notes. <laughs> so, um, SX1S is equal to negative 1 over LY of S plus VI over LU of S. SYS is equal to 1 over CX1S minus 1 over RC y of s from this one we found that x1 s is equal to y of s times cs plus 1 over r we replaced x1 into the first equation so we found y of s multiplied by uh, cs oh i forgot that x1 that's that's the problem like i, I forgot that s1 i think c S, S here. CS2 plus S over R uh, is equal to negative 1 over L Y of S plus uh, VI over L times U of S. And finally, the transfer function GP of S, which is equal to Y of S divided by U of S, it's going to be equal to UI over LC divided by S2 plus 1 over RCS plus 1 over LC. <sighs> okay, so this is the transfer function for a buck converter. You can Apply the same method to find the transfer function for a boost converter, for a buck boost converter, it's the same it's exactly the same method. You choose IL and VC as your parameters. You come up with two equations. You simplify these and you take them to the S domain. You simplify them so that you end up with one equation that relates your output to your input. Output is the output voltage. Input is our duty cycle. Okay, and this is basically, this is the, the transfer function of the buck converter. We need to do this if we want to design a controller. We, we have to find the transfer function of our plant, right? We did this for the buck converter. You can do the same thing for a buck boost converter or um, a boost converter, okay? Now that we have this, we can basically see uh, how we can design a control loop for it. GC of S, this is GP of S, this is Y, it takes the measurement here, positive, negative. This is the um, Y ref which is our output desired output voltage. Okay, this is the error. This is the duty cycle that you wanna supply to the gate, uh, to the, sorry, to the, yeah, to the gate of the switch, right? So, and it would give us the, uh, the output. So this is what we wanna have. Right, so I'm just gonna do very quick example and then finish this this video here. So let's say like if we have a controller that's a PID controller, uh, you know that it's gonna be like this KP plus KI over S plus KD times S. I'm just gonna write this. Uh, I'm gonna multiply uh, everything by S, both top and denominator. So like it's gonna be. Uh, KDS squared plus KPS plus KI, right? And this is our plant transfer function. Okay, so if you want to find the transfer function of the whole system, how can we find that? It's basically GP times GC over 1 plus GP GC. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just write down the final value. I'm basically going to multiply these two together and you have to simplify that. I'm just going to write down the final answer. Yeah. 
vi over lc kd s squared plus vi over lc kps plus vi over lc ki s cubed plus 1 over rc plus vi over lc kd s squared plus 1 over lc plus vi over lc kp times s plus uh, vi over lc k1 right just so remember that vi is our input voltage which is constant so everything is constant r c l like let's say like we have them like the parameters that we can play with is k i k p and k d right um so there are two things that you have to be careful when you change these values like first you might be jeopardizing the stability of the system so you have to make sure that your system has no right hand side pole right you also like the performance of the system might change right um so for any system now you can find actually the steady state error how can you find the steady state error i wrote a formula in the previous uh, in the previous video um so e at infinity is going to be basically limit of s y reference s times 1 minus ts right um this is this is what we found right um so you have ts you have your y ref you can find as s goes to zero you have you can find like what is your steady state error um and if you use a simulation package like matlab you can actually also like find um your time domain response as well so um, i'm using this from dr kim's tutorial so like there are two examples that she put in her tutorial um for these values of r 10 ohm l equal to 100 micro henry c equal to 500 microfarad and v in equal to 12 volt these are our constants right so she simulated the same system twice for two different sets of coefficients for the controller ki is let's say 1000 here and kd is 0 0.0001 okay and as you work with these controllers you realize that these are actually very very sensitive to the values um, one of the reasons that you guys cooked so many diodes in the lab for lab five was that actually you were making the system unstable by by choosing the wrong value for the um for the controllers but that was that was our also our fault like we should have like provided some limit for the gains uh so like that was actually a good thing that you saw that like if you design um, the wrong values for your controller you're making the system